Welcome to the latest episode of Branding the Experience. We discuss ways how we can create environments where employees actually want to come to work and customers want to keep coming back. I am Ken Bader, your host for Branding the Experience. I'm also your organizational culture and world-class service standards expert here with our latest episode, The Cold Calling Nightmare. <laughs> now, I actually did have a nightmare this week about cold calling. I kid you not. Uh, way, way back early in my career, uh, probably wouldn't even call it career. Um, I was working my way through college and worked at a brokerage firm uh, as a caller. Uh, I forgot what they called that broker assistant or, or flunky or <laughs> whatever the uh, actual title was. Uh, but when I was a junior in college and started my finance classes, I wanted to get involved in, in a finance business and, and got the very, very lowest level job in a brokerage firm. And it was making cold calls um, for different brokers in, in the firm. And I remember just how much I hated that in the 80s. And even then was thinking, you know, really, is this the way to, to do business? Because so many people were, you know, felt in, intruded upon uh, when I called them. And, you know, I, I felt like I was even manipulating them to talk to a broker and so forth. So I don't know what in my psyche or in the cobwebs of my mind uh, made me go back uh, <laughs> about 30 years uh, in my dreams to uh, to have a cold calling nightmare, uh, but I literally woke up in, in a sweat uh, about the dream and I'm like, you know, had to snap out of it. And it just kind of reminded me of of one of the things that I preach quite often. Um, and it's not necessarily a hey, never do cold calling. But, you know, I asked the question, you know, is cold calling right for your brand, culture, and strategy? Uh, because it's seen as a negative by many people. Uh, God knows how many robocalls I get during a week. Um, I never answer any of them. Um, don't know exactly how effective they are. Uh, but you know, one, you know, I encourage you from a branding the experience standpoint, you know, if you're going to use cold calling, think beforehand of, of how that already starts with a negative in that you're calling somebody out of the blue that might be doing something else. Um, or worse, you're cold calling in person. You're knocking on somebody's door when they're either relaxing or spending time with their family or even working. Um, or going into a place of business if you're doing B2B cold calling. Uh, when a small business owner is truly busy, because small business owners are busy pretty much all the time. Um, so it's always an intrusion. Uh, think about what that does to your brand, how that forces you to work from a negative from the very beginning, just to get to you know, an even somewhat positive place. So you know, I encourage you to look at alternatives to cold call. And things that cold calling are not. Um, and these are some of the things that I do. I will reach out to people that I'm connected with at LinkedIn. Uh, I will send them emails. I will give them calls. Uh, people that I meet in networking, people that I meet uh, in different conferences. Um, now I've already met these people or made some type of connection, even if it may be minor. To me, that's not a cold call. We've already had an initial connection without any type of, of sales activity. So that next step, if I do want to introduce some type of promotion, uh, some type of encouragement to do business with me, that isn't our first contact. And therefore, to me, is not a cold call. Uh, one other thing that I suggest quite often especially if you're trying to connect with people on social media, is to find something out about them first. Be specific about what you know about them or their particular business, especially in B2B, because then it's not cold. Uh, at least make it, as I like to call it, uh, a lukewarm call where, where maybe you're on an even plane and not working from a negative of, hey, I don't even know you, and hey, you're intruding on me. Um, so 
The other thing too, especially when it comes to both B2B and B2C sales, is if you have a lead magnet. Uh, my lead magnet happens to be a small white paper on the B plus C plus S formula. I put that out quite often. Um, and if somebody signs up for that and grabs that, they automatically go into my email list. Um, I don't see that as cold calling. Um, we've already had a connection. Um, I've been nice enough to give you something for free uh, in order to get you into my circle. Um, if you no longer want to be in my circle, that's perfectly fine. You unsubscribe, tell me nicely not to contact you anymore. I don't believe that that is a cold call per se. Um, I would appreciate, by the way, and this is a good point on the other end, if you have taken a lead magnet, whether it's from me, um, or any of my colleagues out there, uh, and you wind up on an email list uh, because of that, you know, just unsubscribe. Say when you get that little survey that it's not the content that I expected, um, or I no longer want to receive your emails, that's perfectly fine. Um, don't report it as spam. Um, to me, I think that that's kind of rude that you've gotten a free gift. Um, and then you're negatively reporting <laughs> an email as spam. Uh, I think that's almost as bad as uh, as cold calling, frankly. So you know, be kind. You know, if you've got the lead magnet, uh, you don't want to do business with the company. Uh, then by all means, just simply unsubscribe. But you know, I encourage you, you know, to not have a cold calling nightmare. You know, to think you know, a little bit deeper on how can I connect with this individual or this business that I want to do business with and lead with something that's important to them. Because if you can do that and make the connection, it's no longer a cold call. There's some warmth to it in that you're actually looking out for that individual. You certainly want to do business, but you're already putting on the platform that, hey, this is going to be a win-win. If it isn't, then we'll go our separate ways. But I've taken the time to begin building relationship rather than just trying to create a relationship uh, out of thin air by picking up the phone or knocking on your door. Thank you for spending some time with me today. And as always, here's hoping that you're branding the experience at a very high level for all those you serve. Take care. Now a word from our sponsor, Bader Training and Consulting. BTC is the creator of the B plus C plus S formula. Our clients that implement that formula increase their net income by 124% and grow their business by 17% on average. The best place to start working with Bader Training and Consulting is with our B plus C plus S audit. The service pinpoints issues as well as attributes of your business's unique brand culture, and strategy. Learn more or sign up for a B plus C plus S audit at www.btcinc.net backslash bcs dash audit.